Okay, it's seven o'clock, so we'll get started. Um, before we start, I'd just like to ask everyone to keep their mics and cameras off throughout the interview. Um, if you do have any questions this evening, please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen. You can write your questions and at the end of the interview, there'll be some time to ask, ask to give questions to Stephen so they can be answered at the end. And I'll try my best to answer as, as many of the questions as possible. So welcome everyone to The Cut Digital. This evening, I would like to welcome artist and sculptor Stephen Lewis. Stephen studied at Manchester Polytechnic and then went on to do a postgraduate at Jan van Eyck Academy, Maastricht in the Netherlands. Stephen has a vast portfolio of works and some of his constructs are of considerable size, often using found materials. A found colour is also of great importance in his work. So Stephen, welcome this evening. Thank you for joining us. Well, my pleasure. I will, would like to start um, at the beginning and um, I'd like you to tell us about your early works and your early practice and what you were thinking about at the time. So Joe, if you'd like to start the slideshow, please. Uh, I was at Manchester Poly in, uh, in 1977, 80. And I, I've just put a few slides in of early work because it gives you, uh, uh, gives people a, an idea of work, of the experimenting idea to like, like most students. Um, so I was, this is just a little selection of photographs that I found and, and scanned and put them in. So this, this one was a, a whole series of little sculptures I made with um, using sort of folding. I, I like the idea of folding sculptures down and with the practicalities that come with that, you could send them around, send them around the country if you had to. Not that I did have to, because I was a student. And of course, it, uh, as a student, you make something. And then a month later, you, uh, you, uh, uh, you're into something else, you know. But I made these folding sculptures uh, using blinds and deck chair sort of uh, uh, notches and stuff. And, and actually, it was, looking back, I was... Um, yeah, it was quite, it was nice, it was, it was uh, quite refreshing to see it, you know, where I'd, I'd come from, really. Um, so I did a whole little series of these. I've only put one in here, the biggest one, probably. The next slide, number two, is a, is a, a little, there's a bit of a history to this. I, I made this, I didn't, I, I didn't know who David Smith was. And of course, looking at this, it is like a, one of the Cubis, you know, or, or like a crude version of sim mm -hmm. similar anyway. And um, I, uh, I made a, a little wooden maquette uh, around a stone. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I think I, I think I, I took the idea off a, off uh, something I saw in a magazine. <laughs> and um, I built these little wooden structure around a stone and then took it away from the object. And then I just, I just, I made the, the little wooden object into steel, fabricated steel uh, boxes and stuff. And it was, it was actually quite a fresh little thing, you know, and, uh, and then somebody said, Oh, look, it looks like a David Smith. And I said, Oh, really? Who's that? And uh, and that was part of my, you know, part of the education process. Is, have, you uh, always, have you always worked in sculpture? Is that something that you had always uh, wanted to do? Have you always built? Um, well, ever, ever since I was young, I always made, you know, I sort of I sort of ran out of the airfix models that most children of a set of my age worked on. Um, you'd buy these kits and then break them off and glue them together and paint them. And you know, airplanes, everything, all structures and stuff. And um, I, I, there was a time I actually probably when I was nine or ten, I got bored of these the limits from these uh, these kits. So I actually started making my own little planes out of cardboard and uh, things like that. So I was always there was always glue, you know, glue in my bedroom and, and <laughs> uh, bits of cardboard everywhere and little bits of color and and uh it's just it's exactly what i'm doing now really <laughs> <laughs> so, it was it was um yeah, you know it's uh i just to make making things and 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 get the feel of materials you know it sensitizes you to materials and you know i was uh i then i had train sets and i was doing i was making train sets and i made radio controlled aircraft 
because we were, as a generation, we were obsessed still with aircraft and Spitfires. And I actually had a disaster once where I made, I made a Spitfire, which was very good. It took me ages. I made it. It was a, a thing that actually flew, but I put so much paint on it. I actually painted it with Hammerite paint and made it so heavy it wouldn't take <laughs> off. But you live and learn. I'm sure I've done it since. Thank you. <laughs> um, the the next, next, yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead, Kasia. No, I was just going to yeah um, invite you to tell us a little bit about this. Um, I piece. got quite interested in the work. Uh, I used to go to the library and look at Art Forum and, and stuff like that. And I got very interested in the work of Alice Aycock. And now uh, I think she's she's still alive. She's probably in her 70s now, I think. But she did. So she was interested in sort of land. She did these structures almost like uh, cowboy sets. Uh, mm -hmm. I would, that's probably doing my disservice. And they were made out of uh, fresh timber, uh, constructed, strange, surreal um, uh, uh, constructions uh, with tunnels and, and uh, in, normally in that sort of uh, a landscape, you know, like a quite clear, what you call that spatial landscape that you get in America. Yeah. Um, there were tunnels, and and I heard later that she, I thought, how could she do this, you know? And I later found out that uh, um, that she, her father owned a very big construction company. <laughs> so that sort of helped in it. But I was interested in that sort of structure, and I was interested in implied function of objects. Mm. So I made this little i made this little uh, well it's not so small actually probably about nine foot high maybe three meters high by by two meters square and it was really about having an internal space that was out of limits to the person the viewer yeah so you couldn't get inside it there were maybe one or two one place you could look inside it so it was alluding to structures, watchtowers, and also the textures of the object, and also about the materials it was made from. It was made from, uh, you know, shattering ply, and um, so it looks, it looked, it looked like it looked something else. So it took you away from the, it took you away from the, the just the object, and it alluded to uh, other. So it was slightly surreal, you know. Anyway, yeah. this was one of the this. So this this was done in about seventy nine, something like that. Thank you, Stephen. There are some um, the next images are kind of uh, a move on, and they you you said that they were quite instrumental in your kind of um, your your journey. Um, signified a change, perhaps, in the way. That yeah, I, I <clears throat> when I. Um, you know, like when you're a student, as you know, as you know, and, and others people on, uh, might be listening to this uh, new, you, you're you're changing, looking at things all the time to try and, you know, you're 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 in fast, quick development, really. <clears throat> and I quite like the work of um, some, although it was quite remote to me, what people were doing in London in uh, between Wimbledon and 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 St Martin's, and uh, they were using volumes and big sheet, big lumps of timber and I was interested in I started to get interested in making sculpture in the round so um I when I moved to Bristol uh we uh, I I had a, a studio outside Bristol near the airport and I it had a lot of space there and I also had a lot of trees um access to a lot of timber big timber so I was I got a chainsaw for Christmas from my parents, <laughs> as you do, and then I I set to I set to work carving these uh, pieces out, and they were really they were worked directly. They went there were no maquettes involved. They were just cutting sections of hornbeam and elm and poplar, also all the stuff that I found in my next to my studio, and um, and it's shaped quite... them, manipulated them, yeah. Was it quite organic in the way that you worked with these? Yeah, I, I was fixing them together with broom handles and, you know, I didn't have much money and, and uh, drilling, or, you know, with an auger, I'd drill a hole through and then, and then beat a pin in through it and connect them, the sections up. And I was, um, I was enjoying the uh, three-dimensionality of it, so moving around it, moving around the volumes. So it became a big thing, really, uh, for me for quite a few years after that. 
that sculpture in the round as 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 known you know was was quite quite an and I'm you know an interesting intellectual problem trying to keep it um a tangible object whilst um making it a physical experience yeah um if we, there are a couple more images that are of a similar time yeah this is at the castlefield gallery in, in manchester and um uh, they they i think i sent some slides and they said yeah we'd like to show they came to the studio and said yeah we'd like to show some new work so i did a a show there was with a a, a, a sculptor called mary shemold and we had a shared uh, show and it was it was the first time I'd really shown these sculptures properly, um, and this was quite an important sculpture. This was called Slider, and this was a an important sculpture for uh, for me to make. And the the following slide as well. Yeah, this was made in after after I um, made that like, previous sculpture. I made a few more. I got accepted at the Jan van Eyck and. I had a very good year there and made a number of sculptures, including some starting to make some steel sculptures. Um, and this was one of the this is one of the sculptures I made there, which is I've still got one well, a few I've still got. The others, unfortunately, uh, were laid to the sword by woodworm. <laughs> it was heartbreaking, but I had to let them go, you know, but I, I could. I'm quite interested in making some of them again. But anyway, this was done at the Jan van Eyck. Then I left the Jan van Eyck and moved back to Bristol and was getting a bit more sort of sophisticated in how I was using the, the um, materials and um, being a bit more ambitious. And really, I was pushing the... Um, I was pushing the, the materials as much as I could, really, timber, mm. um, to the point where I had lots of joints breaking, and it was a practical problem, you know. Mm. And I wasn't getting that visual flexibility that I really wanted. Um, so this was a, a, a success, sort of, I thought, it was a successful sculpture at the, you know, from that period back when I was back in Bristol, just before I moved to London, and a very delicate. You know, it's like having, it's like as if it had brittle bones or something. It was a very delicate thing. But, um, it, you know, something was telling me that I'd probably at some point I'd have to make these things more robust. Yeah. I guess was that to do with the weight of the material that you're working with and then the, the, the finer joints that you're... Experiencing? Yeah, I mean, the weight didn't... Uh, yeah, the, that's right. The weight didn't really... Um, it was just weight, you know. It didn't give you any structural strength, really. The, the, the ratio was slightly out where with with metal with steel you can you can a small weld will hold you know a ton of something you know? mm -hmm. it's, um, I think that there is a there is a, a, a ratio an inch of weld will hold two tons or something so obviously it gives you a great um, uh, visually it gives you a great physically it gives you a great flexibility. Yeah. Um, more than you know, uh, and and that's why a lot of people of are you know if you want to get a certain feel in the sculpture and you're drawing with form, that's why you uh, that's why you you tend to drive towards steel really. Yeah. And the next sculpture was probably <laughs> the limit. This was actually quite car what I'd say car esque. It, it, it was um, uh, nice. I liked it as a sculpture, but it was you know it was. It was it was impaired by its, uh, it, you know, it could it could stand being in a few shows, but uh, it, it succumbed really in the in the long run. But it was really telling me now I've got to work, start working in, in a more in, in steel, which is more plastic and, and more, um, you know, uh, gives me a lot more possibilities, really. Yeah. Sorry, I can hear a dog howling. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you and you moved to a, a studio in Greenwich. Yeah, I got. I moved the 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 the, the artist who who I showed with in Manchester, Mary. She was um, moving, 
and she a studio in Greenwich, which was fantastic. She said, she said, you know, would you be interested in 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 moving there, moving into my studio? And I said, very much so, yeah. Um, and I went to have a look at it, and it, it was um, terrific. You know, it was a uh, it was twelve hundred square feet, and I don't know how that works out in meters. But it was an old electricity board depot, and uh, there were good artists there. Mally was there, and Jeff Rigdon, and uh, uh, Clyde Hopkins, and Marilyn Hopkins, and lo loads of people were, were at there. It was set up by Jeff Lowe in the in the in the probably 75, 76. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an old electricity board depot. Richard Rome was there. Um, and a lot of good art, a lot of good sculptors, a lot of good painters. And it was, a, it was, I was very lucky going there, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was one of those places where people could, would come in and say, you know, what, what are you doing? What, this looks good. This does, what are you doing with this? This doesn't look so good. And it was a real, um, a real nice place to, to work near the park in Greenwich. Yeah. It looks like it has a really great, uh, yeah, height, so you can um, build quite large things and have your yeah. Tools I mean, and... you know, it's um, yeah, that's funny. I've still got in that in that uh, view of that little the view of the studio. I've I've got I've still got the big pillar drill. I've got the little bench grinder, and I've got the table. I've still got them in my new studio, so my latest studio. <laughs> Thank you. We'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, in this, in this, this is one of the first sculptures that I made in that studio. Uh, not the first sculpture I made in steel, but this one the first I made in that studio. And I showed it at Francis Graham Dixon's uh, first show there, and it was that's a photographic of it in the gallery. And it's, I think, it, it's the first sculpture I sold. So it was a that's that's the great thing for a young artist to sell work and um so i i made i made that in in the studio and that's probably 1987 88 um a very simple sculpture um and it's in some corporate um foyer now and was this using found materials or had you? Yeah, this was it? using found ship's plate. Uh -huh. So that central part of the um, sculpture is is um, is quite heavily textured, rusted. Um, uh, when I say textured, I mean um, corroded. So you have this beautiful surface, like dimple surface, and really, I just left it. it the color itself was was good, you know. So I I just had to make the decision to leave it, <clears throat> to leave the colour like that. So I was leaving things raw. Um, the bottom sections, again, that was just sim very simple sort of foot that would just keep it upright. It's so, quite nice having that contrast between the, the king yes, line. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And, and, it, and it was, it, that's the way. But it, I, at this point, I started to work with colour, with masses, with... What I was trying to say, with with uh, objects that had colour in them. So I, I would count that. Um, I was partly hanging out with painters, you know. I would count that section uh, in the middle as as a coloured, a sort of coloured object. It's subtly coloured, you know, it's sandy, rusty colour, but it is a coloured object. So, um, yeah, I, I was starting to work with. I guess looking back, I was starting to work with colour even then, you know. Yeah. Thank you. We'll move on to the, the next slide. This is made out of ship's plate. Now, it really is ship's plate because when you when I was cutting this with the oxycetylene, it was um, you could you could take <laughs> not a great health and safety thing for anybody. You know, <laughs> uh, I could taste this. I had a sweetness in my mouth and that was for the lead paint. Oh, no. When I was cutting it. So what I what I did is I I I I. I it's only it's only quarter inch thick steel, so it's it's got some weight to it, but it's not. Uh, it's basically quite thin steel, and I just intersected um, some cut shapes. I cut those shapes out in it and cut a slot in the in the uh, down the middle, and, and and just sort of slotted them together, and that gave immediately a sort of th 
sort of three-dimensional form of which I could work with. And I cut and folded. Uh, I didn't really, um, I tried to use the, all the materials that were given to me in that, in those two ship's plates. And then I uh, put a little sort of, um, uh, well, I, I probably put that orange thing on there to balance something from another view, but I, I felt it needed something. And then the the flat plate on the top that I've actually variegated that that color on there, so that's painted color. Yeah. It's sort of tonal. So I was really enjoying yeah. painting. It was always a great treat getting the paints out once you've got a sculpture. There. <laughs> Just the smell of it, you know. Um, and did you tend to apply paint um, kind of after you constructed the, the form or did the, the paint come? Perhaps? No real rules on that. I mean, yeah. if, if, the, if, the, if the color was good, you know, from the word go, I would, I would, um, I would put it on a back burner and then enhance it late, maybe later. Or very often the case, um, you you'd damage the color by uh, cutting it with a very hot, you know, uh, uh, an oxycetylene. So you'd have to reinstate it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do whatever. I don't think there's any rules. You know, you can't have any rules really when you're involving color. I mean, it. I try to use the found color all the time. So that orange piece in that is found like that. It's part of an old crane or something. So there is a, such a like an industrial. There's almost an industrial palette of color. Yeah. Which is quite nice you know it can be quite nice to to work with you know i have used that quite a lot especially in, in some of the later images yeah thank you we'll move to the next slide thank you this is made out of um this was made out of quite quite thick one inch plate um and i cut it and <laughs> there's not much to say about this i was probably, it is sort of like a head i guess but it wasn't i never thought about it as a head at the time i wanted to create an internal space inside I wanted to use paint again. I painted it sort of like a jet black. Uh, and I wanted to play around with that. The it's got a little sort of foot at the bottom, which um, was, was, was good. Was, I wanted to in integrate. I just felt it needed to be another color. So I put it, it was a reason for cutting, painting it like that. Is that that's the small um, kind of lighter coloured foot at the bottom? Yeah, there. the little foot on the right. Yeah, and that's um, that's somewhere in Luxembourg now. Somebody bought it. There. It's really interesting how something that's quite small can really balance the whole piece. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. um, it's uh, it was a nice sculpture. That I like. I was, you know, it was. Yeah, some of these things I'll probably never see again. You know. But I always liked it. It was very photogenic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is a nice thing to show when you're doing slides to students. They go, ooh. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. But it was a nice sculpture. And the people who bought it were very nice, you know. Yeah. I think oh, we've seen that, this one. We'll move that's on to the next. Yeah, I'm trying to brainwash people. <laughs> so around about that time of Francis, the show of Francis's, um, I, myself and uh, I'll, I will name them, uh, Pete Lewis, Tim Coppard, Jeff Malam and David Rhodes. They were all painters, all from actually from Bristol. I met them in Bristol when I moved to Bristol and me, a sculptor. And we are um, we 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 were. Um, we were trying to show our work, you know, and people weren't really that interested in the sort of 80s, late 80s in abstract painting, really, or sculpture. There was a, a lot of it was people were interested in new figuration, you know. I'm sure the new figuration people thought nobody was interested in them, really, but that was our view on it, was uh, that we, we, we really weren't getting... Um, you couldn't see work like ours in galleries, um, or in or, or getting reviews or anything, so we just thought, right, let's do it. We'll have to do it ourselves. So um, Jeff did a very nice cover. Uh, Malam did a very nice cover, which is that sort of triangular shape on top. And they were all they were all painters who were interested in sculpture, and they were all good artists, you know. And they're all they are still friends. So this is a, a magazine that you this is a magazine you started with the help of lots of people there and nobody people can't probably read all those things but we got massive help from when you actually put it out there and ask for support people were incredibly generous and all those writers you know we had frank bowling alan gow darby bannard 
uh, Dave Rhodes, Dave Rhodes, uh, David Wilde, Peter Davis, they're on Jeff. Jeff and I did an interview with um, uh, um, Joseph Herman, which was really good. Went to his studio in uh, Hammersmith and he gave us a unique uh, interview about his, his sculpture collection, African sculpture collection, which was one of the best in the, I think one of the best of a particular type Mm -hmm. uh there was a, there was an existence really he was he was really entertaining uh character and uh then other people like Jules Zalitsky sent a poem in and um Alan Fisher Lee Hayward and then um Anthony Caro wrote a piece I don't know if he had that ready or whether he he um but you know Caro was very supportive Frank was uh David Everson was you know we had a show in a flat and all these artists who we, you know, John McLean, Al Alan, um, uh, Frank, David Everson, they'd come to the flat, you know, and he, John Hoyland, he, he, he was very supportive. And they were, you know, it's what you need as a young artist to see older people who can give you, uh, you know, give you, see the work, crit criticise it and then have a drink afterwards. And you don't, you feel less alone, you know. <laughs> it's amazing to have such a... Uh, a fantastic uh, list and group of uh, yeah supporters and, and inspiration. Oh, it, it was, you know, they 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 weren't getting it. They weren't getting some of them weren't getting attention either. You know, everybody goes through like waves of um, popularity, or you know, we always think somebody's because they're they're showing work a lot, or you know, or we think is a good artist or well established. But they, you know, everybody goes through if they're everybody goes through ups and downs, you know. So to, to see a young generation of um, artists coming through whose work uh, they're interested in or they can relate to is, is was was probably good for them, you know. Yeah. Was this about around the same time did you have a show at the, the Whitechapel? Was it the Whitechapel Open that you... Uh, yeah. Um, it was a little bit later than that. Mm. But the Whitechapel Open was a great event it used to be a great event actually yeah uh, it was a fun event you know because it was all the artists in london you'd meet up with your paintings or sculptures under your arms and uh, at some library in stepney green and yeah it was a, always a fun thing to do you know but it's it's different now yeah Thank we won't you. go into that <laughs> but with, we are, with the fuse gallery we also set up a gallery which you can see in the photograph for those you know, it's not a very big image, but um, you can see uh, we had a huge gallery, 4,000 square feet, massive gallery in Smithfield. And um, now I think it's now Smith's Club or one of these, you know, very sort of fashionable club. But we converted it with, you know, maybe a thousand pound converted it. And uh, we had a, an electrician from Acme who did his work for nothing, you know, and, and wired it all up. And... Uh, we got loads of lights from someone and done it. So we put these four or five shows on, you know, which were a real success, you know. Thank you. We'll move on to the next. So you were talking about um, found colour. Um, yes. This is, I guess, quite a good illustration of um, how you continue to work with that. Yeah, this is all found colour, really. So the, the, the orange is from a JCB or something. And, the, you know, I'd, like a lot of sculptors who worked in steel, you know, you'd go to scrapyards um, and you'd meet other sculptors there as well, <laughs> which was, used to be quite funny, not all the time, because there, there were more scrapyards in, in central London than there were, uh, you know, on the, they're all on the outskirts now or way out of London, like sort of Erith and places like that. Yeah. But you, there were some scrapyards in London and you'd hear about, uh, uh, you know, you'd talk to somebody who worked for Cara or, or Cara itself or some of the other sculptors, David Everson and some of the other people working steel and they'd say, well, there's a good scrapyard, um, you know, in Wandsworth or something. <laughs> you'd go off and try and try and blag your way in and you'd have to pay for it. You'd pay for the weight, you know, so... Um, You'd you'd walk out with a you know with a you go in with a little truck and you'd come out with a maybe maybe as much as a ton of steel, and that would keep you going for six months you know, a, a year and and in this little sculpture this going back to the colour this was one this was um, 
probably in a little series of sculptures that um, I don't really work in series, but I did a load of little sculptures about a metre high using this um, found colour, found objects. Yeah. Very simple folds. And uh, I mean, that, that orange that's in the centre spine of that one is... It's just a beautiful sort of fleshy, I don't know, orange. And you just, you, you're working with the colour as much as the form. So the form might not be interesting, but the colour is. So sometimes you um, you think, well, that colour is doing the work of, of form in a sense. Yeah, I think we talked about that before. I was just asking you um, if you built around the colour or you... Yeah, if the colour influenced the yes, I, the final I think, piece would take. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, again, you don't have any rules on it, but I, I think uh, you can't, if you're actually making something and being sensitive to the the, the object, you, you have to, sometimes you have to go with the, uh, you know, you have to go with what the colours, the feeling the colour's giving you, you know. Thank you. The next image shows a uh, wonderful scale. That you work at um, yeah this is um i was um it was a long process but we i was part of a, a big british council show in uh in germany and uh it was a very nice thing to be asked to, to be in to be in uh lots of british artists were in it um sculptors and and painters as well actually yeah of course so this was a sculpture that I made. It's, a, it's about five meters high by four, five meters wide, probably four meters the other direction. And this was just trying to get more space into the sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I always thought it was a bit like, uh, I quite like those McDonald's used to make these, um, that I think they might still have, and they have these scoops, which they pick the chips up in and then they empty it into a, Oh, yes. Sachets. <laughs> and uh, I always quite liked that as a sculptural shape. So you had this sort of, you had a, a triangular scoop with curved edges and it yeah. went down into this. And uh, for some reason, I couldn't quite get it out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> this sculpture on the incline again, uh, I, I thought it, I thought it, uh, that's what I, I sort of wanted that sort of feel of like a gathering. Yeah. You can't yeah. really see it from this photograph, but it was, um, um, and it, it was sort of made, you know, there the were no maquettes for this or drawings for this. I did some drawings when I got, uh, had a few problems with it, but uh, it's mainly worked on directly. This, the central bit of curve actually, um, on the top, I remember now, some of those curves, I used to teach in Winchester and they, there were a swimming pool of all places caught fire. <laughs> I don't know how that <laughs> happened to me. It actually did catch fire. And the whole roof, the whole roof, um, presumably it went out of, it, it sort of snuffed it out when all the steel <laughs> fell into the swimming pool. But they had these amazing new steel, but it had only been built a couple of years and he'd been open a couple of years. They All the heat from the fire. Yeah. From presumably from the water, I don't know, uh, melted these beams, heated it, and so these amazingly dropped, dropped, forged beams. Wow! And I used them in this sculpture that you couldn't really, uh, you couldn't really wish for better things to draw with. So okay. that's what those funny curved sections are on there. Yeah, amazing. Interesting, and you, uh, interesting community baths. <laughs> <laughs> and I just pick out on the. The comment you made about drawing yourself out of a problem. Um, yeah. And yeah, is that something that you often do? Use drawing uh, kind of partway through your process of making a sculpture too? Uh, yeah, that's a David Smith quote, really. I mean, he said that. I mean, he, he, he drew him, he, you know, he did drawings. He, one of his quotes, he said he did drawings to get himself to solve problem, to get himself when he was in trouble. And I think that's probably quite a good, uh, I think that's a great, thing to tell especially to tell young artists young sculptors that if they get into a problem they can try and draw their way out of it but it's not as easy as it sounds but i did do quite a lot of drawings on this to try because it lent itself to it, sort of line drawings yeah yeah um, and it sort of lent itself uh to to uh 
to trying to work. I did work. I did make some changes with drawings, and you know, it was before the days of Photoshop and stuff like that, which is actually a very useful tool. Yeah. Uh, actually, with sculpture, if if you know, in draw in terms of drawing, you can just edit things out and yeah. see what it looks like. Um, yeah. So, I. I would sit down and draw. Also, it's quite nice not lifting heavy things for a while, you know. Yeah. Yes, it must be quite physically demanding. <laughs> well, I was built like a. I was built. I was built like, built like an outhouse at those days. I don't think I could do it these days, you know. But I was. It was a bit like weightlifting, you know. Uh, we'll move on to the next. Yeah. Another. This is another sculpture that I sent to Germany. Um, and these are these are half inch steel plates. It's quite a heavy old lump, this for me anyway. Um, again, very quite simple using planal thing, very simple uh, triangular shapes, quite shallow, uh, almost like a relief, really. And they, 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 what's great is that they bought this, so I didn't have to come back. <laughs> Which you ask any sculptor or pay, you know, you, if you're trying to find a place for it, it's great that things don't come back in the best possible way, you know. Yeah, I think we've taken, we don't have an image here, but you had an amazing image of um, several of your sculptures on the back of a, a lorry, and it just demonstrated the, the amount of work that needs to go into actually. Maybe yeah, it's a, ton of, it's a lot of work, but you just you just nibble away at it bit by bit, and uh, it it's, it's it ceases to be it just ceases to be uh, overwhelming, you know. Except when you think about it too much. <laughs> Thank and, you. Um, and the next <laughs> one as well. This sculpture went to Germany as well. Um, this was a sculpture that um, I. Um, it also went to. Uh, uh, the Harris Gallery in Manchester, in uh, Preston, and we actually had to, uh, we actually installed this in the in the t <laughs> in the rotunda at the Harris Gallery, which is a marvelous gallery, a public gallery, a Victorian, marvelous Victorian gallery, and this is quite big. I mean, this must be six meters from the from the triangular section to the curved section. Uh, and about four meters high, and uh, yeah, we put it right in the middle of this. Um, mosaic floor, and it looked it looked really amazing there. But it's um, <laughs> I got in trouble with the the elderly ladies who had their tea on the other side of it, so they'd have to circumnavigate the sculpture. <laughs> and uh, when I was taking it down, one of them very uh, animated, were in a very animated way, <laughs> described what the sculpture did. She said, it went out like this, it went up like that, it went out like this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then it, it was, it was awful. <laughs> uh, it was very funny. <laughs> but you. she described it so well, I think she'd make a good yeah. critic. Yeah. And the next image show, really shows the scale of some of your pieces as well. Yeah, this is, a, this is outside the 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 place in Germany. So this is just two of three big sculptures I had there. In 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 uh, they, they. So this is actually quite you know, uh, this sculpture no, no longer exists, and I'm really sorry that it doesn't. But it was a I, when I moved studio, I literally couldn't fit it in. So, oh. but this is a nice, uh, quite a nice view of it in Germany. Yeah. And moving on to the next image, you started to explore um, kind of non-solid structures. And I guess was that was this one a move on from the previous piece where you yeah. were? Yeah, I mean, it's this, this girl, I wanted to, I was sort of getting interested in making something. It's slightly out of sync, this, because I made it, I made number number 21, the slide number 21. Um, I am, the, this one I sort of made, um, I was interested in making, you used to get these beer crates and bit and and milk crates. Uh, they're made out of wire, galvanized. And I like the fact they stacked and they were open. And I got quite uh I got interested in you can't buy them anymore. So um uh it was uh I thought I'll I'm I'll like I'd like to make because it was a site-specific piece, it was difficult to get it in the building. So I made it in these layers, a bit like stacked crates. Mm -hmm. So from this, I made I made the previous slide, which was using wire and uh, sort of six mil bar. And that was actually from a drawing. So, yeah. um, you know, and I'm trying to make it very simple, almost like a fountain shape coming out. Lovely. Yeah. And this slide also, uh, the previous one, um, 
Yeah, the, uh, yes. Uh, that, from, that, from that, an artist approached me, Chris Marshall, and said, uh, "Look, Steve, I'd like. I'm having problems making this sculpture. I don't know what the you know this. Uh, I've got this commission in the Thames. <laughs> the great sight, you know. Can you um, can you?" Uh, so if we go to number 22, the, so he said, uh, you know, I'd like, can, can we do the, can we do a collaboration? So I said, sure, let's do it. Yeah. So we made this, made him a cat, which is accepted. And this was for Sustrans, which are the cycling, um, uh, psychopath people. And a few other people uh, put money into it as well. So this is a huge, this is a galvanized bars in, done in layers, both vertical and horizontal. And this is off the, you know, on a dolphin. They call this structure a dolphin in the Thames at Deptford. And uh, we we installed that in 1998, and it's still there. So that's about it. five mm. meters high by five meters wide. Mm. It's beautiful. And you were talking about the install as well. It's quite a, a feat of engineering. Yeah, we installed. What was what was? We tried helicopters and all sorts. We had the army. Uh, we had the bomb disposal team from Catford came down to have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and they were really actually really sweet you can't imagine how you know very nice bomb disposal people and they said uh, we'd like to we we could build a bridge across to it i said well we've got no money and they yeah. said well you know it doesn't matter we could use it as an exercise but the funny thing was the thing that stopped them doing it which would have been fascinating was was street furniture <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a lamp and a and a seat, and that they said that would stop them doing this bridge, which if that wasn't there, we could have just done it with a bridge. So uh, it was it was, and then we looked at helicopters. We rang these very posh people in Norfolk. They said they could have done it with a helicopter for three thousand pounds. Wow! Said, well, that's lovely, but we can't do it. So in the end, because we're on a creek at the studios. Um, they, the Port of London Authority um, had this little service boat called Driftwood and they, they chugged up, the, up the, uh, the creek and we, we loaded it onto the boat and they did all the rest, you know, with, with our help. You know, we were on there with them and, and, and bolted it all down. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Here's another piece um, that illustrates your, your found colour. Um, yeah, this this is probably around about. I don't know if this round. I was doing this at the same time. This is about sort of three, two meters, three meters long, two and a half meters long by about a, two, almost one eighty high. And this is a, a sculpture using found materials. These these sort of um, green section. They're, they're machine guards off machinery, big machinery, and the blue section is on the base as well. Um, and that these uh, these were from a scrapyard, and uh, I kept the the colour apart from where I burnt it off when welding. Uh, I more or less kept the the the, the, the original colour. Uh, so this was sort of like an architectural, in a way, and uh, it was an architectural sort of experiment, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to be sort of maximalised, really. The the uh, um the the sculpture so i had lots of stuff going on in there but it it, it held together i think yeah. um and um the um uh the machinery i think i told you that the two machinery guards uh were actually in they were completely um inside them they were completely <laughs> cased in oil and grease hard you know I, I, I you know i left it on it didn't seem that it wasn't in my scope i couldn't see it so i just left it you know lateral thinking thank you we'll move on to the this next was in the, that was in the white chapel open that was oh, all right open. okay yeah and this and is a, yeah go ahead yeah. i was going to say this seems uh quite different maybe because it's the shapes are maybe slightly more organic than geometric than, than yes other ones. It, this was made for this was actually made for site this is almost site specific piece because it was a it was a sculpture that um uh two um uh people had organized this show at the chelsea physic garden and they wanted some ink 
you know, he obviously had to put something relating to plants or something. I don't think it was enough to... I mean, some people made mushrooms, <laughs> some other artists, which is fine. And the other other people, you know, the installation people were, were doing, you know, things using organic objects. And I decided to make uh, something from a plant. So I, I'm, I found this quite interesting plant, which is like, like a fl- uh, one is uh, like some wart. They call something like, I don't know, bladder wart. Isn't it? And they eat, uh, um, they, they eat, eat insects. So I made this little sculpture from them, and actually, I quite like. I still like it as a sculpture. You know, it's quite unusual. Yeah. But it, it's funny when you make things about something; they, you know, they look different mm. in a way. People, you know, and I, I do, I, I, I learn something from doing that. You know, mm. that you make something about something rather than just making. I mean, some sculptors make very good abstract, you know, purely abstract sculpture, but. Um, some sometimes it may, you want to make something. Uh, it's nice to have some, some. Sometimes nice to have a subject. Yeah, yeah. And it frees you up in a weird way because you're not, you know, um, it makes you put things in a place within the sculpture that defy logic. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Thank you. Move on to the next. So your process for this um, piece is quite interesting. Yeah, this this was um, a sculpture I showed at the actually showed this at the cut, and um, this is called Mimic, and I called it that because it the top of the sculpture almost mimics the bottom. <laughs> Not that's I am great poet, I know. Um, uh, but this was um, um, I had a laser cut sections made. This sort of cigar shape in the middle. And I just couldn't find a way. I, I almost made them to be uh, to be awkward things to deal with, really, and to, to throw me off what I was what I was doing at the time. So I wanted this very organised, very ordered structure, and then around that, I could sort of um, I could be more exper- a little bit more experimental so what i did is i i actually got i did a little drawing and i projected it onto uh the steel with an overhead projector which are very useful things actually and then i just drew around with a fine line and then cut it out with a jigsaw so it was very direct from the drawing to the steel was it was very you know very direct and yeah. i i inserted it inside this uh, long sort of almost engineered sort of uh, sort of structure. It's a bit like, like I, I discussed before, it's a bit like a Zeppelin on, yeah. A, yeah. on a staging post. And yeah. stuff, but, you know, it's, you can uh, see a lot I, I still of, like it, you know. Those kind of things, I think a lot of your work, yeah, you can see um, boats and, yeah, air, aircraft. Yeah, well, I'm from a generation who are obsessed with that. <laughs> And then you were talking about make, we were talking about maquettes and um, yeah, uh, and I'd like to move on to the next image. And this was something that you made out of paper, small. Paper. Yeah, I made a little paper. Um, I made I made a little paper maquette, and I wanted to. Uh, this was called this. It's funny, this sculpture is called Panjandrum. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a bit of a story to that, but. Um, and it had these large sort of sort of flaccid w- w- sort of thing, sort of wings coming off each side, and they bolted onto this central column. And I think I wanted to use colour, and I wanted to just be uh, make very sim- make it superficially simple, but actually it throws up lots of interesting sculptural possibilities with inside these wings and underneath and, and on top. So I was, I was quite pre- uh, pleased in the end. And this is the second version of it, but the first version, those two wings went straight uh-huh. on each side of the tube. And I, I, I ended up making it with a lot of work, actually making it more articulated. Yeah. And this was in, um, in uh, shown in, in the Hay Festival as part of um, the, the Randan Stables uh, exhibition, which uh, Naomi and her husband put on. And it was, uh, this was a part of a whole thing. Gina, I think Gina Mekoff and Charles Hewlings were in it, and uh, Mally and Christine Stark. 
um, and Joel Tomlin. Oh, six or seven of us were in it. And it was a really nice show and a really nice experience and very nice people in a nice place. It's nice to see. Oh, that. oh, the uh, title, yeah. but the title's quite interesting actually. The title, it, it I, I called it that because of the. It, those two circular wheels were a bit like there was a secret weapon in this in the Second World War to smash down uh, barbed wire fences that the Allies developed, and there's actually an episode of Dad's Army with a similar thing on it, and these we large wheels had rockets on, and they'd light them and they'd fire down and they'd they'd smash their way through, and there's fantastic footage at the time of this thing going out of control. <laughs> on some big pending sounds or something. Anyway, that, they nicknamed it, codenamed the Panjandrum, so I had to call it that. <laughs> Thank you. You might whiz through the next few slides as I think. Yeah, I know, we're getting a yes. little short on time, but this one yes, was made know, in yeah. a, a similar way um, with your, uh, did you make a maquette for this as well? No, I didn't. This, this I worked directly with with uh, found steel from the scrapyard and I did a, I, I, I put some, added pieces of things onto this. This yeah. is in Luxembourg and I think it's still there in Luxembourg. Okay. PC, it was, a, it was a nice sculpture that. And we'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, please. I want, this was based on a Max Ernst um, sculpture that I really liked, a sort of racket, rackety old thing, but it, it was basically a piece of wood with a bit of hair stuck on the top, sheep's, I don't know, sort of hair on top. And with the, holding this knitting frame, and I just like the idea of a lot, a, a vertical, a, a very vertical um, uh, dynamic with this, with this bulky sort of cage in front. And I did mm -hmm. a few sculptures based on that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it looks a bit like a windmill, but it, you know, it does, you know, it. I, I think I got the feel of the sculpture what I wanted anyway. Yeah, thank you. And the next couple of images show work in progress in your studio it's nice to see that your drawings in the back. yeah the, i put this in because it does give you we talked about drawings and that i did i got a commission in the school in Rayleigh in essex uh, swain park and they they uh said you know i did some art projects with the children uh and i came back a, a few days later and I started making this really started making this maquette based on these drawings you can see especially the one on the left and mm -hmm. this 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 uh, sculpture eventually <clears throat> if, you, if you go to the next one uh, Kasha uh, and that's me making it and then if you go to the that's me in the studio if you go to the next one that's what it ended up like so that's about four and a half meters high by four and a half meters long and reasonably narrow, maybe a meter or so narrow and painted, obviously. Lovely. <clears throat> it's nice to have I like the, the curves against the, the hard angles. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I mean, that was, um, I, I, it, I like the way it catches the light. I mean, the, every view of this looks, it looks slightly different. You know, I was mm -hmm. pleased with this. It must change with the light as well, I guess. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I haven't seen it for a while. I think it probably needs some a uh, bit of a refurb, actually. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I we'll have to try and raise some money to do that. Um, <laughs> and uh, then this slide cool. is um, quite unique as well in, in the context of the work that you've, we've seen of yours tonight. Yeah, the, this one was clearly made from a drawing. Um, but it was... Um, I projected this onto a sheet of steel from a, my overhead projector, from a sheet of acetate. And I wanted something which was gonna deal with a bit with illusion because it is actually, there is quite a bit of depth in that. There's very subtle curves uh, in the actual flat plate. So it doesn't just go up straight. It actually, it actually curves away as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, I mean, it's unique, really, in my sort of folio of stuff that I actually just went with the drawing, you know, and yeah. painted it, and, and and even painted the black lines that you know uh, delineated the the edge, you know. Thank you. But, you know, it, it, I feel I feel it, you know, it's got a right to exist. <laughs> It'd be really nice to see that in um, in a space to understand how it how you see it um, in front of you when you're in space with it. Well, it's in the store in my studio, and I'm, I'm thinking about getting it out at some mm -hmm. point. 
Okay. Okay, and the next slide. These yeah, are... this, going back to the drawings, um, this was from a drawing. This is aluminium, cast aluminium, about, it's about 500 millimeters high. And it's got um, quite, I've taken it quite clearly from a drawing, but I, 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 I cut it, I made it in foam and pushed the sections through. So those funny shapes on the bottom, those linked circles, I actually cut that with a wire, hot wire, and then pushed it through. Mm -hmm. And then likewise, the top right, push it through. And then I inserted rubber into the, into the sort of shallow relief areas. And rubber. the rubber is those, those darker shapes there. Yeah, I, I, did, I feel I couldn't paint it. I needed to put something physical in there. So I, I had some rubber from something, and I might have borrowed it, and then um, permanently. And I, put, I cut mm -hmm. it and glued it in there. Thank you. And the next piece is um, a print from... Well, yeah, it's a it's a little it's actually a little uh, ink drawing I did okay. with um, uh, make a nice print. <laughs> Might make a print, and I did this. As, uh, I want I was got interested in this drumstick shape. Um, uh, maybe I've seen it somewhere. I don't know. Like, almost like a almost like a hip joint. Mm. And I did this little drawing. And the, the next slide, <clears throat> next slide, you'll see a. I made this in cast aluminium as well. So I, I made this in foam, carved it. There's a ton of work doing this because the central drumstick section is actually only linked. It's actually, I carved it away. So it, it actually um, is only, it's only very sort of tentatively held in that space, even though it was carved in that space. Yeah. And almost carved. It's a bit like those love spoons that the, um, they used to make and they'd, that have little tentative connections with the yeah. uh, with the with the actual main object. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah. Thank you. Moving on, these are, are some smaller pieces as well that you worked. Yeah, on. this was oh. a this was a com I did a, some drawings for commission, um, and I made I made a little I made a little sort of terracotta maquette, which. Um, I thought it was nice. I thought, well, I'll try, maybe I'll try and make this more permanent. So I had it cast in a, an industrial foundry and they did a very nice job actually. Mm. They've still got the pattern. So I can always, uh, I made a little series of three or four of these. Thank you. This is a sculpture called, um, what's it called? Monitor. And this was, this was made out of bronze sheet, which was, uh, silver soldered and manipulate. So I rolled it and. So is it actually hollow in the middle? Yeah, it's hollow. Yes, yeah, it's actually quite light. And um, yeah, it was. It, I'd never really worked with bronze sheet before. So mm -hmm. it, it, as opposed to welding, which I can do now, I um, I silver soldered it, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it was based on some. Um, well, the, if any Americans are listening, some of the some of the some of the. Um, uh, during the American uh, Civil War, there were these ships called monitors made, which was a radical design, completely radical design. And uh, they were very low-lying ships with huge uh, shore batteries on them, or uh, what well, they wouldn't be called shore batteries. There they'd they were guns on them that would attack batteries on the shore. So they were very low-lying, almost like crocodiles. Mm. And I, I, I was really interested in them. They were very spooky things. Mm. Very spooky. You can I tell that from the shape of this this piece here. Yeah, yeah I sort of just extended the turrets out to make it, to get away really from being a lit, making it a literal thing to make yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. And moving on, so. Yeah, this is this is a one from a few years ago. This is, um, uh, like I said, I, I used. This is the final version of this. I used it's almost architect like a little architectural model and uh, um, using lots of it's got brass, bronze, copper, everything in there, all bits of uh, that I've had in the studio. And I was really trying to make interior spaces and trying to use. You know, when you when you look at it, you think, well, what's in? You know, I wanted to make hidden spaces, and I've always been quite interested in that. And this was as a as a sort of thing, you know, and just in just walking around uh, 
It looks, it reminds me of the kind of the drawings of the Tower of Babel or like a, Yeah, it is like that. That's very good. Yeah, that's very good, actually. Yeah, I, that, that's a good way of describing. And when you see the other side of it, which I haven't got a photograph because we have got limited amount of images, uh, you see it really does look like that from mm. the other side, actually. Thank you. And we're moving on to the, the last slide here. And this is your oh, yeah. most recent piece, is that correct? Very recent, yeah. I mean, it's still on show at the, um, the RA this year. So this is about 800 millimetres high, I think. And this is bronze as well. This is uh, fabricated bronze with these four cone shapes, which I had a real struggle with trying to use. Once you get these given shapes, which I had made, I had made in, uh, I had the cones made in Gosport in, in Hampshire, and, I, and once I got them, I thought this, this would be easy, you know, we'll be able to, because I wanted to make it in a different way and I got into real trouble with it. And in the end, it was, it was, it was a big, you know, it was a very, um, you know, it came together very nicely. So I'm very pleased with it. <laughs> I think time's, time's almost Yes. Gone. Oh, there's so much. And I know that you have done so much more. And if only we had <laughs> a few more hours to, to talk <laughs> about your work. It's fascinating. Thank you so much. So I'm going to open it out to our audience now. And I'm going to ask you if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I will ask Stephen. I have one question from uh, Johan Don Daniel, who's a previous artist on on the Cut Digital. And his question is, have you ever found similarities to your work in other parts of the world? Gosh, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, I know, I know some sculptors and, uh, you know, like most artists who are serious about what they do, you, you're always looking around for, for things that interest you uh, that, 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 um, Think, oh well I haven't seen that before or yeah they're they're interested in the you know anybody can make an object which is <clears throat> similar to what you're doing it's whether they do it on a regular basis or not and you think mm. they're they're more they're more your uh they're more in your sort of court really yeah, yeah. but then you, you know your taste change and you know what you know about yeah but I have yeah I know, I know there's good scubs in America who aren't household names who make really good work, you know, I'm interested in. Yeah. Normally, if artists you, who would be, you'd, you'd make, you, you'd, you'd, you, you normally, you normally make contact with people who are interested in your work and they will with you, you know. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I've just got one question coming from uh, Miles and John. Hi, Steve, really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Simple question, what next? <laughs> Yeah, thanks, uh, John and Mars. Yeah, that's really. Uh, I'm I'm going to go back to one thing I didn't say about the last sort of six or seven slide uh, slides is that I, that was a lot of that was from notebooks. Uh, that imagery, uh, apart from the last one. So I I've sort of gone through like I'd call my sketchbook sculptures. <laughs> Uh, so I I'd really like to work on some big sculptures again, really, because and that I feel comfortable with that. So I'll probably do that and carry on with the uh, some keep keep some smaller ones. I mean, I work on smaller sculptures because I, I like the scale of it, not because they're uh, necessarily easier to work with. It's it's you know it's a different kettle of fish, really. Yeah, thank you. Um, question for me: Are there any uh contemporary or new emerging artists that you're particularly interested in at the moment? That's really all. <laughs> <That's laughs> really, uh, no, no, I mean, I, 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 I well, to, to answer that, I actually, I was, I was looking on Instagram and I saw somebody's work and I thought, oh, that looks good. And I, I I think I said to Mally, I said, I've just seen something really, really interesting. On, on I don't know who it is. And of course, his name was there. And it, he's a sculptor who was, um, I used to quite, I was quite interested in because he actually came from Liverpool, where I'm from. And uh, it is uh, Garth Evans. And he, he must be in his late 70s, I would think now. He lives yeah. in New York, or did, did do anyway. And I thought the sculptures looked really interesting, you know. And... Um, 
uh, you know, it's uh, he's he's in his late seventies, maybe eighties now, and his work yeah. was good. And yeah. you know, um, younger artists, there's the 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 yeah, there's some good people out there. Yeah, thank you. I think we have run out of time. So I'm going to say a huge thank you to Stephen. Thank you so much. It was absolutely brilliant. Fascinating You're welcome. Talking to you and really enjoyed learning about your practice. It's been brilliant. And thank you to our lovely audience tonight. Thank you for coming. And we hope to invite you back for our next um, interview, which will be with Derek Morris. And that's going to be in January. So thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.